So like after a show, do you said you suffered depression. Do you ever go through a depression and then you have to come out of it? You no, know, I used to in the nineties, you know. But now I'm too old for that. <laughs> what? Well, good to hear that. I'm too old for good depression. Good to hear that. Because I've because I've travelled a lot. I've seen from Is my... it because you've met many other people who you can relate to? Well who worse. Can... Okay. Even some who have everything and they're depressed. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. What are you depressed about? It's, it's money, right? You've not made money. Okay. But what is money? Money is colored paper. Mm. Money has no value. It's paper. This is value. It's a structure. Money is no, has no value. We were fooled into thinking it does. Mm -hmm. Once you leave home with a bag of money, by the time you go back home, half the bag is... Where is, where is that money gone? Sometimes you're like, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> the piece of land doesn't move. Mm. Never. You, that was the wealth for our ancestors. They never had money. I have ten goats, I'll give you two goats, you give me three chicken. Yeah. Once colored paper entered our psyche, families were split. What do you think they're fighting over? People are not fighting over property. They're fighting over color money. Yeah. If you think they're fighting over property, just bring a bag of money. And say, no, okay, let's not share this house. You just take that bag of money. I mean, okay, fine, fine. <laughs> you know? So people have no clue. And the spirituality that leads you to know all these things. You know? Yeah. So if somebody sells, um, says, oh, you know what? I'm going to sell our family land. Even my brother and sisters won't know. So, and I'm going to get 600 million. Mm. So they sell it. They buy a Range Rover. Then they have, they have crystal right here. Everybody say, oh, see that guy with his babe, you know? <laughs> and, but, and, and go into an apartment and start renting in Nakasero. So how long can you do that? And then you have nothing. You're poorer than when you, when you had your land. So people fail to understand that. But you know, we see families who had so much. And, and you can't go back. Next generation, next generation. You sold family land. Oh God. Your brothers and sisters hate you. You have spent the money. The, no money is enough. None. No money is enough. So money is just color paper. Somebody printed something, put a picture, and said, now that is worth $100. And it's worth your car. A piece of paper. You know how much engineering goes into doing a car? Okay, how about land? That's very depressing when you put it like how that. How about land that where you can have plants grow? Yeah. Chicken roaming. A plant grows, you eat matoke. For generations. You even know what is under there. So how do you put a value on and say, ah, that is worth five hundred dollars? Pep one, two, three notes. How many blades of grass are there? Do you know how they grow? And you tell me it's worth five pieces of paper. So people put too much value on paper. You know? Mm -hmm. And they put too much value on paper and lose relationships. They lose their spirituality. They lose their culture. They lose their self-worth. They lose, they lose everything. For paper, that paper can do anything. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So that depression issue, you have to put it into perspective, you know? You have to understand people are going through stuff, man. Yeah. So for all the years you did the jazz safari, what was the biggest challenge for you? Convincing people jazz means anything. Because when we started, I mean, people have tried before. Alex and Daola had a jazz show. Yeah. Um, to do just Raymond, purely jazz. Raymond Biabazari, Dance, Dance and Bagenda. Uh, these are guys who did put a lot of effort before we even knew what jazz was. Yes, you know. The jazz gatherings, they all stopped. The support wasn't there. Why do you think people... Is it jazz. a lack of education? Is no, it a... no, 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 no. Jazz is a preference, you know. It's a taste. You just have to have a taste for it. It's one option, country, classical, jazz. So it's not easy to digest for some people. But with time, people, you know, you give, we gave them the option. Because you seem to make a compromise at some point. When we you had even to. change the jazz and soul. No, we had to. You look at, is there a jazz festival? Is there a jazz festival anymore? 
Look at all the biggest of them, you know, in America. Playboy, this, that, the jazz crews. Most of that music comes from jazz anyway. So they will have Lala Hathaway, Jonathan Butler, Jared Albright. Then they'll have Kenny Latimo. Mm. You know, yeah. how do they survive? They jazz stations in America are closing. Jazz festivals are closing. Doesn't make commercial sense anymore. So people now say, okay, what is closer to jazz? You know, so they do. They bring Tony Braxton, then they bring a lyric now. So you, they, they, they kind of serve both crowds. Yeah. That's how it's working. Okay. In the Cape Mall, then they have a, a what's his name? Kem. Yeah, people like Kim. So they get guys who are closer to jazz, put them there. Mm -hmm. So when we started, you know, because when the Elijahs were playing. So play then you can market to more than just the people who yes. appreciate Because Elijah mm -hmm. was playing just jazz on Radio 1, Elijah mm -hmm. Chitaka, but he was also putting. You know, some Masekela songs when he's singing and Makeba, and, you know. So we decided, that, okay, those few people who are listening to jazz, let's do a gathering. So that's how it just so far started, you know. Because okay. I kind of, we, we are t taking reggae to a point whereby it's everywhere. The church, where everybody's doing reggae. <laughs> there's, there isn't much more I could do. Okay. So jazz came into, you know, so we started doing the jazz safari. You know, started in a car park. Serena, like that, like that, like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, right. Getting people to appreciate it yes. is, is a tricky bit. And sticking to it. Mm. <laughs> we were lucky because the system made sure, you know, like when Nile Gold came on board, mm -hmm. Nile Gold is, you know, for this, this, the whole survival of just Safari, Nile Gold. Yeah. You know, so Nile Gold now made, gave us the platform, you know. When, go, when the owners of the company changed and Nell Gold was being removed, uh, Johnny Walker came on board. And um, it was pretty much a property they should have taken in the first place. Because you know, it's about taste and, you know. Mm. So it was, it was the perfect fit for them too. Okay. But they always wanted the property after Nell Gold had built it. You know? But you don't forget Tasca. Mm, yes, the first well. jazz ones were Tasca because I did and the albums I did with Pragmo were yeah. Tasca sponsored partly. Yes, actually, you know? your first album was what 2004? Was that your My first? My for jazz? Which one was your first album? 93. Those 93? were reggae. I was I did so many reggae albums. Oh, before. so your first jazz album yes. was in 2004. So jazz we did uh, yeah Angela Cowles, Dark Chocolate, uh -huh. Tasca. Um, then we did Pragmo's four albums. Mm -hmm. You know we're doing now jazz albums. So how so, many albums have you done? Done and released, mm. maybe about 10. Okay. Yeah, about 10 only, I think. But I've written so many songs, like seven <laughs> and, like a thousand, actually. So what's your plan? Do you file. go back to look at they're them? They're in the file. Do I, don't, you... I don't go back. So you've just kept them? Yeah, they're in the file somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> so you keep but writing new material? I'd stopped for a long time because I'd written too much. So I'd stopped for years. This year I wrote a whole album. A reggae album which I'm working on. Um, because I hadn't done a reggae album for years. But I wrote it in days. You know, I just tested myself and said, okay, do I, can I still? So I wrote a song. Like, I can write a song in three minutes. Okay. Words and everything, everything. Hmm. So at times I was thinking maybe I was going crazy. So I stopped. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're talking to other people who are struggling. Yeah, yeah. But now I've, I just did uh, recorded some songs you know mm -hmm. they haven't been done yet because i'm trying to get something something well done you know so i involved some musicians from england from chronix's band mm -hmm. to get the proper reggae sound so you're working on that yeah okay now someone who's been in music for 30 years there was a time where like there were no live bands do you remember like live music was gone I, apart i think it was a free go and that was all i blame sama timba for that peter Oh. And when Peter came, came from America, we used to hang out a lot, you know. He had some very good music. Okay. But Peter was a businessman too. Mm -hmm. So in 95, when he did the Dungeon Tour, mm -hmm. it was the first time I think trucks were used at Logogo. I was even part of that show. So it was just a DJ and trucks and dancers. Okay. And the whole, it was packed. They went to Masaka. So I think the promoters are thinking, mm. like, why do we need a band? Yeah, why do, that's when it started, 95. So oh. bands were decimated, totally. Right. Totally. So it was just trucks. It made business sense, but it destroyed the industry, the music. No. 
so it wasn't until when we started doing uh with elijah actually when we because all these boys now are playing in churches mm. they, they are singing this is they are singing this is secular music so when we with elijah when we started doing this jazz thing slowly by slowly mm. it started seeing bands coming up isaiah katuma i remember yeah he gave me a call mm. he was in england very frustrated <laughs> i think he called me for 45 minutes i was at web city it was the only internet cafe I used to go. I mean, internet then was. He called me like, you know, here. So I told him, man, you have to plant a seed. You can't just. So he sent CDs. We gave them out. Elijah, what the music? That's how he built his thing, you know. So all these guys, we are frustrated. We 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 started building platforms for live, live music, you know. Yeah. Right now, I don't even the mainstream artists who used to want to make money now you, they have to nobody can do a track yeah everybody has to use a band so all these I bands Jekati, well, all these guys are growing from the time right now there's a band everywhere yeah there's a live band everywhere so that makes it is even saturated sure. oh yeah oh yeah but not all of them are that yeah. great yeah but it's good i'd rather have a bad live band than trucks <laughs> they'll, they'll, they'll learn they'll, they'll come through mm -hmm. i'd rather have that Okay. Well, it's a space for musicians yes. anyway. Yes. Okay. That's what music is about. Hmm. So, in 30 years in the music industry, what are the changes that have really stood out for you? Especially now, because you were saying, like, you know, which musicians have really stood the test of time, for example. Uh, songwriting. What is music now for you? Songwriting kind of took a dip. The good thing is instrumental has came up, but songwriting kind of dipped also mm. it hasn't you know because people used to write songs that we still listen to after years yeah. you know it's but it's not just a uganda problem it's a global yeah, issue it's a global thing so commercialization record companies are not investing in musicians anymore they merged they became these big conglomerates so so indie companies the so-called independence yeah if you go down there the music is incredible that's where it is so they they started creating their own platforms but the mainstream runs radio stations they have the money. So all this music you hear is mainstream music. Mm, you have to go digging. Aha, uh -huh. you have to be, you know, that's what I'm saying. Now there are so many platforms where you can find Raphael Sadiq mm -hmm. or other people like that. And But you have to have that hunger. It is still a disadvantage because mainstream, you don't have to go looking. mainstream music mm, you have to go digging aha uh -huh. you have to be you know that's what i'm saying now there are so many platforms where you can find Raphael Sadiq mm -hmm. or other people like that and but you have to have that hunger it is still a disadvantage because mainstream you don't have to go looking it's in your face <laughs> it's everywhere okay now before all types of music were in your face and you could choose now kids who don't know all this stuff have to if they don't have that spirit to go and dig they will never they will never get to know you know, so, so how do we, how do we build that hunger? How do that's we what I'm saying. feed it? M music needs to choose you to do it because as long as people focus on what they are going, what they are getting out of music. As long as people focus on that side, they can never grow musically. They will build apartments and what, and after that they will leave music, because mm -hmm. now they've got what they want. That's why you see a flood of people joining politics now. Okay. They were never musicians in the first place. M music gave them what they wanted, a house, a car, fame, you know, they, what's the next big step, a big name, you know, mm -hmm. so music is a lot of things to a lot of people, once you go into that to get that, it will give you that, but it will throw you out, you know, you can't, people now think of even competition, oh, these young boys are coming, huh, what can we do, how can you think, how can you think like that, mm -hmm. competition, it's not, it's not football, <laughs> We still listen to Miles who died. We still listen to B.B. King. They're not even here. <laughs> and we can still listen to Bruno Mars, you know, who's new. Or we can still listen to Kev Moore, who's there's younger. There's room for everyone. Yeah, there's room for everyone. So why do you think there's competition? Why do you try to, you know... It's incredible. But that tells you who's a musician and who's the artist and who isn't. 
many of them Isn't are businessmen. Isn't it about the ego as well, though? Business. Mm. If we wake up tomorrow and bricklaying makes out of money, people will go and do bricklaying. <laughs> they will leave music. This started in 2000, around there, when MTN was putting in a lot of money. Nail breweries in promotion. Remember when they were building equity? Mm. Music was making a lot of money for a lot of people. Mm. So everybody said, what? I'm going to stop hawking. Let me get and my savings and go to the studio. Yes, yes. You have a hundred stations. They will play anything. When we were starting music, there was one station. Everybody had to be played on one station. And that station was not 24 hours. Yeah. So there was just a small pool Thank and you, you very all much. had to find. There was a whole committee that used to decide which so song. So you had to excel to. to uh huh. To... There was a committee that decided mm. what song is going on is good enough. Yeah. Out of all this. Now you can't. And you know, if you, if you don't play, I'll go elsewhere. So the, the quality is, uh, is struggling. But there are some good things coming out, you know. Mm -hmm. Especially in popular music, in pop music. In pop music, there are some who are doing music, you know, because you also need music for people to jump around. <laughs> so there are those who are doing it well, yeah. you know. Yeah, there's some people who are able. Who are able to do the pop because the it, it has always existed. Yeah, you know, mm. for every Curtis Mayfield or Teddy Pendergrass, there was somebody doing uh, something that was pop. Yeah. 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 So there, there was, but the, you know, it was all good still. But what we have a problem now is that you have people who are doing this, and there are very few people do, get, being given a chance to do the other alternative music. Yeah. And they're not. They're not getting the space. You know, mm -hmm. that's why we did the jazz safari and all these things for those guys to be on the big stage. That's why we avoid mainstream musicians on our stage. Mm -hmm. They are they already overplayed. Okay. They're played everywhere, and then you get guys like Megade or, or Lawrence. You know, on bass or all these younger guys, the Ronnies, people who you've never you never get a chance if you don't go to the National Theatre. Mm. You know, you will never see them on the big stage. So. There's no point putting a mainstream music who has videos on stage. When we have these guys who never, that's it. That's on the show where they will have same PA, same rig. If it is Keith Sweat playing on stage, they're going to play on the same stage. So they'll get that. So is that part of your motivation? Oh, because yeah. you have big plans. Even before we started, I was like, how are you going to have, how many bands? Seven. Seven bands. It shows you where we've come from. Where we're doing shows before on wooden stages, all the equipment we had to ship in, mm. you know, Andrew, Lugasira and all these people, they gave up. <laughs> Everything used to come. We used to carry des desks in small vans in England at the airport, drums, one, two people, you know. Mm -hmm. Imagine importing drums and... You had to bring everything in. Right now, you can do a show here without importing a single thing. Yeah, you have people who set up... So if we, if we used to put give people a chance then on the stages. All you know, the baby cool started on, you know, got the exposure. But when Buju was here, mm. those are the first shows where they, you know, Chameleon with Shanks and all these people. Yeah. So we still do it now, you know. But now live instrumentalists, that's what we're looking for. So we're going to have seven bands. Because I'm thinking by the time you have seven bands, what you're saying, all these people you wouldn't come across ordinarily. It's, it's, it's a teamwork. Now the team that we, we have, you have, we planned for this thing for months. Yeah. So we have engineers being, you know, coming from Spain, from England, <laughs> from Belgium, you know. Mm. So we are giving Maya the same set as we are giving Megade, who you've never heard of. Okay. Okay. Okay, no Mugabe or whoever. Mm -hmm. Same, same stage, same lighting engineer, same everything. Mm -hmm. So the engineer will know that they will give the same. You know what I'm saying? And that's a privilege, you know. Mm -hmm. So these things are planned. You're saying, okay, there are festivals in the whole world where there are 20 bands, 30, 40. How do they do it? But don't they do that like over a course of three even days? In a, no, or... like Rotterdam and all these things. Mm -hmm. Even if it's over three days on the one day, Glastonbury, mm -hmm. they have all these many stages. How do you think they do it? Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, so this is just one stage. Yeah, we'll do it. Yeah, I like that. It's like you know, it's one just, yeah, just one stage. It's not a big yeah. deal. We have to start somewhere, mm -hmm. you know. We have
Mm. So that's why it's the old music safari, you know. So, 30 years, what have I learned in 30 yes. years, really? That's See, what you If I can do seven to. bands, you know, what am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> it should be 50 bands. <laughs> Do you ever feel like sometimes you, you put so much pressure on yourself? I don't think I even put pressure on myself. No? But I don't like uh, mediocre, you know, mediocrity, mm -hmm. especially music. Mm. Music, uh, it kills me. You know, it has to be done proper. <laughs> music has to be, even, if, even the show, the event, the experience, mm -hmm. you know, even, yeah, right. even if, it, if, if you have a thousand shillings, that a thousand has to go to that event to make sure, you know? Mm -hmm. So yeah, actually, yeah, I do put, I'll call it pressure, but it, it, it has to be done that way. It's like people, somebody, like a chef, do they put pressure on themselves? They put, the passion is there that they, you know, after somebody eats, it says, who's the chef, <laughs> you know? Yeah. A painter. Mm -hmm. Everything you do, you have to be the best, you know? Do it to your best possible, you know? It's important. It's very important. Otherwise, you're not respecting people. Yeah. You, you need to respect people. You mentioned Maya, and she's a headliner mm. for this all music safari. How did you decide on Maya? Because you said before you you try to stay away from people who are too who are all over the place, who are very popular. It's, was that part of the reasoning? That's How did what, you settle on her? That's one, but I've always considered pedigree. Okay. Mm -hmm. Even for the jazz safaris. How many years have you been doing music? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How many songs do you have? If you can choose a guy who's a hit now, and they have two songs. People have paid all this money to come and watch two songs. It's a running joke. You have an you know album launch yeah, with three you know songs. Saying, yeah. Mm. So if she's been in the music 20 years, so has Keith Sweat, Joe, mm -hmm. all these people that we do. So people come and pay money, and they watch a one and a half hour show. And it's a For, performance. Yeah, you be 40. Yeah. It's a performance, and there are many, you know, so you can't, somebody can't pay for a five course meal and you give them starters. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Yeah, so there's fast food and there's soul food. So we try to do the one that takes Luwombo and then they go, they smoke in their eyes and they, they, they remove the scales from the fish. Then they, by the time that food comes, it has gone through. A lot but of... when you taste it, uh -huh. you need to sit down, take off your shirt, even sweat a bit, you know. <laughs> but fast food. Chips, you walk eating, you know, and toss out the paper. I like that. And it's not there's even healthy. fast food and there's soul food. Yeah, and it's mm. not even healthy, you know. Mm. So, Maya, <laughs> you, you need to read her story, you know. She, running her own company, uh, you know, her own record label and what she went through and, you know. Mm -hmm. and, the, and, and and what she did before this Destiny's Child. And So, she, she, she set out of trends, mm -hmm. by the way. Mm -hmm. Like, like the, the, the whole sport outfit things and hip hop. No, no girl had done that before. Mm -hmm. So, she, and she can sing. She can sing. <laughs> she can sing. She can sing. She's a violinist. She's this, she's that. Her dad is an she, R&B singer. She was a dancer as well. A, a professional dancer, she's a wasn't dancer, she? Mm -hmm. You know, she does a lot of social work too. A lot, you know. So, good to be a musician, but even a good person. Mm -hmm. So, I look at, I have ter terabytes of data that I go through. To, to point to a musician, <laughs> okay, you know, mm -hmm. and I'm always about revealing musicians to people or showing them. Same way I was shown when we had all the stacks of, of records. Nobody forced me, but they put them there. It's your choice. How would I have discovered Bob Marley? How would I have dis discovered Ray Charles? They say, okay, what is this? Ah, a guy putting on glasses. Mm. Okay, put all the help mm -hmm. in. No, it's the same the other okay, day. Okay, I like that. Uh -huh. I don't like that. How, you know, it's like food. How do you know what food to eat? Yeah, true. I was saying the other day that I miss the time when you'd watch a movie for the first time and you knew nothing about it. Yep. Or you heard a song and you, had, you knew nothing. It was like this brand new experience. Now with the marketing in the world today, it's just yep. this overload yep. coming your way. You don't know what to get. You don't know what is real, what isn't, mm -hmm. unless you're really interested and you dig mm -hmm. deeper, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. So... I don't like people who are lazy when it comes to art and things. People need to, if you love music, if you really need to love music, you know? So, even the musicians I work with, I pick some are not even the very best, but they're disciplined. Yeah. Or the, you know, things like that, that make the whole spectacle what mm -hmm. we want it to be. Okay. So you talked about, as in your opinion, you feel like we've lost value in so many things. Yeah. 
what what are the things that you from your journey you, you believe we should really pay attention to we should focus we should not forget first and foremost is roots roots and culture it's who you are because you're born the creator's firstborn child is culture because you're born in a culture you're not born in a religion or a belief people choose I say ah oh, okay I don't like this. Tomorrow I'm going to become a Catholic. That is your choice. Mm -hmm. But you don't choose who you are. You're born. Your parents then choose who you, who they are, either and way back and, you know, nobody chooses. So your firstborn child is, where are you born? Mm. Okay. If it is a seed, where was it planted? If you, if you take maize and you plant it in a, in a, in a, in a chisenyi, probably won't grow. But if you put yams, yams know where they have to grow. It's funny, people try so, when they're young, they try so hard to run away from their roots, and when they get older, they just, come Just back. look at chicken. Mm -hmm. Or any animal. Because I go to the village a lot on Wednesdays, and the hills and all that. Mm. And so I was there, and I was asking, there was this hen with this chick. So it entered the house, six sharp. So I was saying, so I asked my mom on that in the village, why is this one... Ah, this one only had, you know, only, only one chick came out of the eggs. But this one has its car corner there in, in the house or in the sitting room. Under a chair. Said, but, yeah, but the others, I said, yeah, this one, we don't know this one. So this one knows. At 6 I have my one. I have my one car chick. Mm -hmm. The others have many. So I don't want that uh, confusion. Let me go and, you know. And I follow all these chicks. Every time I go back, I say, ah, this one, I go. I say, but the chick, now the mom starts pecking the kids. Because now he doesn't want to eat with them. Because now you're grown. They show you how to... Because yeah. the mom digs out the ants or whatever, and the chick is. Mom digs chick. With time, I see the mom now pecking the kid. Now they're fighting for food. Mm. Now you have to... Yeah, now you I have to. I see it with cats too. Yeah. A lot. Wild cats. Yeah. I see how they grow. Mm -hmm. This is... This is... This is no, do they go to a school? Is there a school for teaching these things? Why do we always go to school for everything? Oh, there's a mom's class. Oh, there's how to bring up kids' class. Mm, there's education everywhere around uh, us. You, there's, there's no manual. Who taught our people, you know, 500 years? Who was teaching them? They had a granny who was there. I would say, ah, now you do this, you do that. They didn't go to a school. What your granny teaches you is not what the other granny is teaching. Because they are different. Mm -hmm. they, the only thing that unites them, maybe they're the same culture. So, oh, no, this is what we do. But if you go to the next village and it's another culture, say, ah, you do it that way. Ah, no, we don't do that way. We do it this way. And the whole, you know, everything was a village or mm -hmm. a community. Let's put it that way. So roots so are important. People have to go to that because that is your I-M-A-I. <laughs> it is your chassis that you can't change. So who are, he has died. Let's check the DNA. You, it's your DNA. It's, that's it. It's yours. So that's important. People mm -hmm. have to... Once you don't know that, then you don't value anything. How can you value anything if you can't value the seed that brought you on earth? So people have to go back to who they are, not what they want to be. <laughs> you can't be what you can be. You can choose to be whatever, but down, you know, when they're going to bury you, you say, hey, I'm to, yeah, throw there and they'll be talking somewhere. <laughs> Others, they put, because we don't know where this one came from, they put them in a limbo, public cemetery. Yeah. You know what that means in Africa here? This, ha, ah, that one. We don't know where that one came from. So, like a dog, you know, just throw you in a jirikiti, as they say. That can't work. So it means it's important. Ah, this one. Oh, that one. That one's granny came from here. And it, okay. Now you're selling all those. People are selling where they're buried. Yeah. So they have no, you know, just bury them. Bury ah, around. but you're dead. Since you're dead, it doesn't matter. So let's sell. And that's where people make people don't walk the journey of spirituality. When you die, your spirit knows where your car housing is. Your body is the car housing. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> the spirit knows, and it will know that I was buried here. That's why you see people who are saying, "Ah, you know, I dreamt my granny was saying uh, my grave is leaking." Now, if they say that we really die, why is the why is that dream coming that the grave is leaking? That oh, I'm I'm feeling cold. But you're dead. It means people that, you know, the spirit must go back to that spot. 
So they just throw you on the roadside. Those are the spirits that you see roaming around, mm. that people use to do all sorts of things. Who cannot rest. So people, until people understand, like I told you, there is a spirit for everything. Mm. Even money itself is a spirit okay. that disorganizes everybody. <laughs> everybody gets disorganized by it. Families are breaking up, churches, respectable people. For what? Mm. What do you think it really is? A piece of paper, <laughs> like the exercise books we read. There's no difference between money and the newspaper. Wow. Soul paper. <laughs> I think we're going to wrap up on that. But <laughs> yay! I don't even want to look at my handbag right now. <laughs> you know, yeah. If you came with 50k, you're you're leaving it here on this cocktail. <laughs> That's it. And it's gone. How do you protect yourself then? You can only do so much. Your kids, they always run to you when they have a problem. Mm -hmm. But if one decides to rebel and runs, they say, ah, yeah, I'm grown. And they go and they meet problems there. When the phone call come to you again, they say, ah, okay, okay, she's my mom. What will she do? Let me call. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm. That's one thing. That's the link that we broke. Our ancestors. You know, you have, do you still have a granny? Do you have grannies? Uh, Some of us don't have grannies. Yeah. I think I have one on my mom's side. But, you know, even when you're an adult, you used to go, and there was this granny of yours who was like 70 or 80, and she said, oh, come and sit here. And she said, ah, I break her bones. <laughs> ah, and, and if you refuse, they will really feel bad. Yeah. So come and, mm. she say, come and sit here. Do you know what that means? She knows you're heavy or he knows... But come they and I carry you. Come right? and I carry you here. That, those connections, that's where marriage is, everything is gone. There's no bond. There's no... Nobody's guiding you. Mm. So how do I protect myself? I can only do so much. So I have people who are guiding me. Some are here. Some are no longer here. The majority are no longer here. You know? But you find... They find you. Why? How do they find you? The example I gave you, if you, your child keeps a bond with you, even when they grow up and have their own children, they say, ah, but how did mom do this? Mm. They come back. Yeah. That, the people broke that. I, did, I don't break, break that because people don't, I can't see them with my eyes. I know they are there. So they are there in the, the spirit. people who are gone. Oh, yes. If you give yourself to them, they will, you know, people, have, people fear the spirit. People fear, oh, those are ghosts. Oh, yeah, that they is, fear what they don't understand. Oh, that is satanic. What is satanic? We don't even have that in our vocabulary. In African spirituality, there's no word Satan. It doesn't exist. We don't know who that... Somebody who tempts people. We don't know that. <laughs> we only know good, just like we have good and evil in humanity. Mm -hmm. Even on the other side, there's good and evil. Mm. You just have to know where the good is and where the evil is, and you avoid same way. So, mm. ah, there are thieves there. You don't pass there. Even in the spiritual world, same, same. It's the same thing. Good and evil. Your own grandmother who gave birth to your dad. Mm -hmm. You're special to that person. I've told you when you go and they say, come and sit here, when they're alive. Even when they're not here with you physically. It's the same love they have. So, you need to find out, what, how do I have this problem in my marriage? What do I do? You, just, you can go to where they're buried and just stand there. Clean around. We families should do this every time. Oh, let's go and where they're buried and clean and show. It's their resting place. Let's go and clean. Tell them what you want. So my marriage is this and that, but nobody's answering you, but you're laying out. Mm. A place that is... You clean where they are yeah. and leave and go, you'll see. <laughs> so, mm, she left Kampala and dropped Fort Potter. <laughs> Just to come and... Uh, our, our, our granddaughter has problems. <laughs> Uh, we need we need to help her. But for you are here in Kampala, what oh we have all this problem. Hey, okay. Now ah, she's in Kampala. Let her go to counselors. Total mess. The other one is free. Just fuel money. Drive. Drive. Go and see them. Resting place. Mm. Clean it. But you have to be open though. You have to be open to accept that. You'll be shocked. What you will talk there, you, it will be the best counseling you ever so get. You're saying this is you've done this. Not once, not twice, maybe twice a month. 
Okay. In the night too. Mm-hmm. Because I have to go to different places and by the time it's night, time is late. That's when I go. See our ancestral home. Mm. Have a cup of tea. The sun, the, I mean, the moon is up there, the stars, silence. Mm-hmm. Just banana plantations. Then I go to the area where everybody's buried and say, okay, my brother is there, my mom's, my mom, my dad's mom, my dad's dad, my his brother. Everybody that you never even saw is in one place. Mm-hmm. One, people that died before you were born. Where, where would you ever get a chance? Everybody is in one place. So you just stand there and thinking, hmm, okay, this is where I'm going to end up. So you think they'll be here too. in town. You're going to end mm. up here. So them, I don't know what they say. We, we don't know this one. <laughs> but for you, you've gone after, I don't know, for you in England. <laughs> now, think people used to walk. There were no cars. People used to walk and gun clean where their ancestral places are. Mm. And clean, and, and, and the family is gone, the children are told. That's what it's about. They are told, oh, that this is your grandmother, he came from whatever, this is whatever, this one is this one's daughter. Oh, okay. So they know where they came. That's what it's about. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. People take taxis, people used to walk. Now you have a car. You can't put 50k <laughs> that you spend in a, in a club or in massage, I don't know where. Or in a meal. On a meal. You can't put 50k to drive. To go and pay attention to where you come from, people for all these things add up. So if anybody thinks they can walk through this earth here without the guidance of those who are here before you, you're wasting time. There's no, there's no panya. Just think of it. If you go to see the CEO of uh, Stanbic, okay, MD, you just walk into the office. <laughs> How long will it take you to even make the appointment? How about the president? Oh, quarter guard, quarter guard, this, that. And these are human beings. <laughs> these are just human beings. We went, to, we went to school with them, even some of them. And you can't see them. So how do you think you can reach the creator without going through? Like, oh, for us, we just go and kneel at the cross and direct. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fine. It is funny because that person on the cross, even he had to go through. Because the Bible says before he was crucified, Mm -hmm. He cried Mm -hmm. at the mountain. He cried blood. And what happened? The disciples said, oh, there are three men who are around the guy. The guy is in pain. I don't know how they knew who the guys were, because there were no cameras, but they just said, that's (laughs) Moses, that's Elijah, and that's his his ancestors. They've come to comfort him. This is in the book people are reading every day. But I can't go to my ancestors that I know my blood. Eh? This is my my dad, my mom, and my... I can't go to them. Mm. Oh, but Jesus can. Yeah. The, Jesus didn't want to be crucified. If he did, he, if he did, he wouldn't have cried blood. Mm. That father, why am I? Why? Yeah. And what happened? His judges came. That's what the Bible says. Oh, yeah. that is Abraham or what Moses and who? <laughs> but those are his judges. They came and said, "Oh, Jesus, don't That's worry." So interesting. Those this are his is, judges. This is, pa- this is painful, but yeah. that is your calling. You have to go through it. It's the exact thing. An elder told us every time there's an elder we meet, very, 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 very fully immersed in spirituality. He told us, in my bed, under my pillow, there's a Bible. He's a traditional spiritual guy. Okay. He's, which I seem that, why are you mixing things? He says, if you underst- want to understand our spirituality as Baganda or as Banyoro, b- bring your Bible and read the Old Testament. I can show you word for word. That everything they do in the Old Testament, they got it from here. And they will win the argument hands down. He will show you, see this one? This one he was talking to, he will tell you the version of... In, in the... Mm-hmm. You tell you, this is whatever, and this is what whatever does. Every area has that. Every indigenous area has the same structures. So I don't know why you jump here to Arabia. I don't know you are Islam. I don't know what. People need to... It all came from here. Why do you think people... Are, Running to the Nile. People are running, everybody, Japanese, Indians, what, everybody. People think Uganda is, is, oh, Uganda, you know, it's a beautiful climate. People have wanted to come here for hundreds of years. Oh, we are looking for the source of the Nile. What exactly are they looking for? <laughs> they are looking for spirituality. Because it all comes from Naruba here. Every single one of them, mountain of the moon, 
the, what they call Naruba, that is where it is. Ask any Jew, ask any Indian. Don't you find Indians doing ceremonies that? Mm -hmm. Ask Nile. any Musinga, the six, where their prophets came from. Ask any of them. So people think Uganda here, oh, that we are beautiful people. People are flocking here. No. People are looking for something, and they've been looking for it for years. And we're going to lose it all. So the guy says, read your Bible. Mm -hmm. Here, their God is saying, my children of Israel, I gave you, I've taken you to the land of milk and honey. I've given you everything. I chased out people from this land and gave it to you. But now you've dumped me and you're worshipping other gods. I'll take this land away from you and give it to strangers. It's in the Bible. So the guy says, now you think about where you come from. You've been given this land. It could have been anybody here. It could be Finnish people living here. But you have it. But you've chased me away. You've dumped us. We who created this place for you. Okay. We'll give it to others to take. What do we have left now? We fail to follow our roots. We fail to follow our creator. We are following other people's creator. It is in the Bible. So they let they, them they move us and give the land to somebody who is willing to follow. And that's what's going to happen. All oh, this is in the Bible. People don't read the Bible. So the guy says, if you understand your spirituality here, Old Testament, everything that I, want, I need to tell you, just translate that. Mm. Because the Bible is 6,000 years old. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Only 6,000. <laughs> <laughs> we are here before that, man. <laughs> It's only yeah. 6,000. So people need to dig deeper. And nobody can teach you this. Mm. You have to open your mind. And it's a journey you have to open it's, You have to. to make it. I want to be a doctor. Nobody just becomes a doctor. Mm. They go through pff, nights being awake. Yeah. Same thing. Mm -hmm. Same thing. We find people in the hills who've never left. They're just in the hills. No shoes, nothing. They can never leave. They have to light fires every day. And the fire cannot go out 24 7 can you imagine some oh, of us we are here in town ah, today i'm going to ah, what are we doing today there are people who are just there you know <laughs> their that, lives are dedicated that's, to you that. know what i'm saying mm. so who are you you know for yourself for you just walk in and kneel at the cross mm. people have been stunned <laughs> man people have been speared <laughs> or for you you just walk to the okay sin and sin and go to the cross you know so that stuff we left, we left behind. Okay, well, we're out of time. <laughs> <laughs> but that is a very interesting perspective. Yes, it's important to know who you are. Mm. Very important. Yeah. It's even important who you shake hands with. It's important who you, you get into a relationship you, you give with. Energy to. Yes, mm. you need to be very careful. You were, did you watch The Matrix? Where do these things come from, you think? They get all these things from here. That there's another world elsewhere. And it does exist. So somebody can just want to harm you and they just shake your hands. And that's it. Oh, we are going to bury and everybody jumps in the same car. You don't know everybody's intentions. Somebody has decided. Ah, you know, it's a, there are a lot of things that happen. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on the show. <laughs> You're welcome. Hey, for leaving us now thinking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thinking. yeah, yeah. So we're not just musicians, we're human beings too. Mm. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, pleasure, my dear. Thank you so very much. You're welcome. And we're looking forward to the show. <laughs> oh, yes. I'll see you there, definitely. That is. <laughs> <Hey>. Yes. <laughs>